This is an example problem showing you how to find the image location for a, an object and a diverging lens. That's a concave lens or a lens that has a negative focal length. First, I'll show you how to work the problem algebraically, and then we will work the same problem by drawing a ray diagram. Okay, let's uh, say for the purposes of this example that we have a lens with a focal length of negative two centimeters. And let's say that the object distance is three centimeters away from the lens. Okay, so first let's solve the problem using the lens equation. That's one over F equals one over the object distance plus one over the image distance. All right, so we'll have then one over minus two centimeters equals one over three centimeters plus one over di. So we'll subtract one over three centimeters from both sides, giving us minus one over two centimeters minus one over three centimeters. Now I need to find a common denominator. Let's use six. So that is minus three sixths centimeters minus two six centimeters minus three minus two is minus five that is minus five six centimeters that is all equal to one over the image distance so we end up that the image distance is negative six centimeters over five, or in decimal form, that is negative 1.2 centimeters. The fact that we got a negative answer means that our image is going to be virtual. And that's always true. If you have a diverging lens and it's the only lens in the problem, then you will always have a virtual image. A single diverging lens is not capable of producing a real image. Now, it is capable of producing a real image in some cases if you pair it with, with a second lens, but a single diverging lens, you will always have a virtual image. All right, how about the magnification? The magnification is equal to minus di over do. That is minus a minus 1.2 over do, which was 3. So the two negatives cancel each other. Okay. And you have a positive 1.2 over 3. which is 0 0.4. Okay. The fact that we got a positive answer indicates that the image will be upright. And again, if you have a single diverging lens, you will always get a virtual upright image. Uh, we got, in this case, a magnification of 0.4, which means that in our example, the image is going to be smaller than the original. 
In some cases, you may have an image that's bigger than the original, but it will always be virtual and upright if you have a single diverging lens. All right, let's write that information up here at the top. So that we have di equals a negative 1.2 centimeters, and that we have a magnification of a positive 0 0.4. And then you can use the bottom half of the screen to work the same problem with the ray diagram method. First, when you're uh, going to use the ray diagram method, first thing you should do is draw your lens. There's our lens. Okay, and draw the principal axis. Here. Here's the principal axis. Okay, now draw in your focal points. Make sure you use a straight edge and a ruler. The focal point is two centimeters away from the lens on each side. So on my screen, that would be right here and right here. Okay, then draw in your object. Uh, and in this example, the object is three centimeters away from the lens. So on my screen, that is here. There's my object. Okay, so we've got the uh, problem. We have a, a drawing of the problem set up. Now we'll use the principal rays. There are multiple rays that are passing from the object through the lens. In fact, an infinite number of them. But there are three rays in particular that are useful when trying to determine what kind of image is going to be formed. We call those three rays the principal rays. And I've typed them out for us up in the upper right corner so we can refer to them when we do our diagram. Okay, so first let's draw principal ray number one. Rays parallel to the principal axis will emerge on the other side as if they had come from the focal point on the same side as the object. Okay, what does that mean? Well, to draw that ray, you should put your straight edge on the top of the object and orient your straight edge so that it is parallel to the principal axis. So here is that ray. Got it parallel to the principal axis. Now, when it reaches the center of the lens, change your straight edge so that it is connecting the focal point on the same side of the lens as the object, in this case the left side. All right. And the ray will emerge as if it came from that focal point. See if I extend this dash like there, see how the blue ray on the right side of the lens looks as if it came from that point, that is our first principal ray. Okay, now, uh, ray number two is rays moving toward the focal point on the other side of the lens will emerge parallel to the principal axis. Okay, let's draw that one. So in this case, what you do is you put one part of your straight edge at the top of your object and the other part of your straight edge on the focal point on the other side of the lens. In other words, put one part of your straight edge on the top of the object, put the other part on that focal point dot on the right side of the lens. And then you draw the line that looks like it's going to go to that focal point over there on the right, but when it gets to the lens, it doesn't go to the focal point. Instead, it emerges 
parallel to the principal axis. Okay, and then you can extend that in a dashed line backwards like that. Okay, and then finally, the third principal ray is definitely the easiest to withdraw. It passes through the exact center of the lens and is not deflected. So put part of your straight edge on the top of the object. Put the other part of your straight edge in the center of the lens. And there's the ray that is undeflected. Okay, now, if you look at the three arrows, you can tell that those three uh, lines are never going to truly intersect anywhere over there on the right side of the lens. However, to an observer on the right side of the lens, if they trace those lines backwards, they appear to all intersect uh, in this region right here. In other words, there will be a virtual image there. Okay, so let's draw our virtual image from the principal axis up to the place where those three lines all meet, and there is our image. Okay, now the fact that the three rays don't really converge there, but only appear to, mean that we have a virtual image that agrees with what we got algebraically. Um, you can also tell that the image is has the same orientation as the original object. In other words, it is upright. That also matches what we found earlier. The image is between the focal point and the lens. Uh, we got that, right, because the focal point is two centimeters. And uh, before, we got that the image is at 1.2 centimeters, which is indeed between the lens and the focal point. And then finally, uh, algebraically, we predicted that the image would only be about 40% or 0.4 times as big as the original object. And sure enough, in our picture, it looks like that that is a little bit less than half the size of the original object. So our ray diagram and our algebra agree. Um, with a diverging lens, you will, if, again, if you have only a single diverging lens, you will always have a virtual image on the same side as the object, and it will be upright. And that's how you do it.